States of America. Since this is the United case, one year ago, we said the corporations have the same rights of people to spend their money however they want on elections. There's almost no restrictions, and that's the way it should be because corporations are people. Don't you see what's happening in the United States? We voted to give the corporations even more control over our elections than they already had. And we sold out the American people one more time. I'm Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I voted against this awful idea. I'm Justice Clarence Thomas, and I'm an Oreo. I believe my colleagues just bought the best democracy money can buy. It's a privatization agenda. It's a union busting agenda. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Delk. Today our guest is Jamie Partridge. Jamie is an activist on labor issues uh, in general and postal service issues specifically. Uh, he is a retired postal carrier. Uh, welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you, David. Great, yeah. So recently you were arrested occupying a post office in Washington, D.C. What was that about? Actually, it was a post office in Portland. Oh, in Portland. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, and let's start with on, that. Okay. okay. <laughs> what that was about was uh, the Postmaster General is going forward with massive cuts and closures, uh, and closures to post offices. The University Post Offices is uh, closing. Um, we've managed. So that's to, a branch here in Portland, in Portland up yeah. by Portland State. And uh, we weren't able to stop it from the closure. But we, uh, ten of us. Uh, on the inside and 100 of us on the outside tried to get a hold of the Postmaster General on the phone mm -hmm. to get him to back off from his moving forward with these cuts and closures and uh, he, the local management refused to get him on the phone and we were arrested. Uh -huh. But we had, we had a big banners that said occupy the post office, stop the closure, stop the cuts. Um, and we're doing this because we have to step up the pressure. Okay. And, so, uh, and we went and uh, after our action in uh, Portland, which, as I said, did not uh, did not succeed. The, the uh, university post office is closing, and the, the folks who have uh, who use the university post office, these downtown businesses, when they need to pick up packages or, or registered mail or whatever, they're going to have to go a mile and a half away to Northwest Portland to the. Uh, Okay. To the Forest Park Post Office up there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. no, is it's that going to really inconvenience downtown yeah. businesses, and it's yeah. going to drive people away okay. from using the postal service and in, into using private couriers. Okay. And, and so, would they not be able to go to the post office that's on just off of Burnside in the Lincoln Building, or the Main Street Post Office? Or well, other other State? post offices will be open. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Th this is a uh, part of a. Um, a plan that the Postmaster General is, is moving forward on as of, as of July 1st. He's, uh, delay, he's changed delivery standards to uh -huh. uh, delay overnight first class mail. 20% of overnight first class mail is going away, away which means it's not going to happen. You mail a letter in, one, in, in your town to your same town, it usually gets uh, yeah. delivered the next yeah, day. Yeah, that's well, just the standard we expect. Yeah, that's, that's going away. Okay. It'll be two days or three days. And uh, he's announced that he's going to close half the mail pro That's in anticipation of closing half the mail processing plants in the country. In Oregon, the Salem plant, the Eugene Springfield plant, the, ben the Pendleton plant, and the Bend plants are going to be closed within a year and a half, mm -hmm. which means that you mail a letter from Salem to Salem, it's going to come all the way to Portland to be processed, and then all the trucked all the way back down to Salem. Okay. And the same thing will be with, it's true with all uh -huh. those other plants. They'll be trucked to Portland to be sorted. And um, in addition to the plan, the plan is half the post offices, primarily rural post offices, are going to get cuts in hours from 25 to 75 percent, which means that 12,500 rural postmaster jobs are going to go away. 
Okay. And these, when these plants close, 28,000 jobs are going to go away. So that's like 40,000 jobs. That's a lot of jobs. Yeah. Right, and, yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, already started. It uh -huh. started in the plants are closing across the country. In, in Oregon, those, those, because of our activity, the closures of the Oregon plants are a year away or a year and a half, Janu January 2014. Uh -huh. But other parts of the country where we're not as organized, these plants are going down. So we went uh, to Washington, D.C., the latter part of June. The, this post office uh, occupation in Portland was in May. In okay. the latter part of mm -hmm. June, 10 of us engaged in a hunger strike in Washington, D.C. to uh, try to save the Postal okay. Service. Ten, 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 10 postal carriers from Portland well, we were, or, or nationwide? Or? We were letter carriers. Um, I'm a retired letter carrier. Uh, mail handlers. Uh, clerks, truck drivers, um, maintenance people, mm -hmm. postal employees, plus veterans, seniors, people from the Occupy movement. We were from uh, Oregon, California, Colorado, um, <clears throat> Indiana, Maryland. I'm trying to remember. Cross section but, of America. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we we are we've come in contact with each other through hearing about lo our local activities uh, and trying trying to raise the level of struggle a little bit pressure. Uh -huh. um, there are two targets. One of them is Congress. Congress is stuck on stupid. Congress has refused to fix the postal finances, which is the excuse that the Postmaster General is using yeah. for going forward with, with these cuts yeah. and closures. So, so, so let's, let's go into what, what's, what's causing the crisis. What, what, why, why are all the post offices and the facilities being cut? Why are all the people becoming unemployed? What, what's driving that? Well, the post office is not broke. Surprisingly, what you'd read in the newspaper, you wouldn't know that the that postal revenues are matching postal expenditures. But Congress has imposed a a mandate that 10 percent of the postal budget go to pre-funding retiree health benefits 75 years in advance. 5.5 billion dollars a year uh -huh. goes to pre-fund retiree health benefits for people who aren't even born yet. Wow. And okay. no other agency has to do that. No business would do that. And it was imposed in 2006 by lame duck Congress in the last minute. And uh, at the time, the Postal Service was, um, you know, highly profitable. Uh, and but the bottom dropped out of the economy shortly thereafter. Uh -huh. And uh, the Postal Service has, has been adapting to the recession. Um, there, there have been there have been a reduction in the workforce. Uh, a lot of as people retire, they're not being replaced, but it, it hasn't been enough. I mean, the, the, these this mandate, this pre-funding mandate, has has driven the postal service into debt. And there's also, in addition, a uh, a surplus in the postal pension funds. The uh, Office of the Inspector General for the Postal Service and the Postal Regulatory Commission have both determined that there's a 65 to 80 billion dollar surplus in the pension funds. So there's this, the surplus in the pension funds and there's this pre-funding which is stashed away about 44 billion but the Postal Service can't get access to it. Uh. It's going into debt. And there's a, there's a, a bill before Congress, uh, H.R. 1351, which has a majority bipartisan support, 229 co-sponsors, and the this House leadership in the House. In okay. the House, uh -huh. yeah, the House leadership has bottled it up in committee for eight months, refused to allow it to come to a vote. Okay. Uh, Daryl Issa from Van Nuys, California, okay. the richest man in Congress, okay. is and John Boehner, of course, the leader of the, yeah, of the and, House. And we should point out that they are Republicans. You can do that. If right. You like. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> in any case. Uh, yeah, so we were there in D.C. a week before this July deadline that the Postmaster General had set, July 1st, and um, we were qu we were quite successful in raising uh, public awareness of this pre-funding mandate. Um, we got we got uh, in all the major media um, something about a hunger strike. I guess uh, tickles the fancy of the, of the uh -huh. major media, and so. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people were hearing about this pre-funding mandate for the first time and calling their congressional representatives so that we, when we were in Congress going office to office saying you are starving the Postal Service. We're starving because you're starving the Postal mm -hmm. Service. 
And they, do you know about this pre-funding mandate? And yes, we know our, con our constituents are calling us up and telling us about it. Well, the Congress is still stuck. Uh -huh. The, the um, uh, Daryl Issa wants to introduce a bill that would continue this, uh, these cuts and closures, do nothing about the pre-funding mandate, do nothing about the, sur the surplus in the pension. Uh -huh. um, but um, he hasn't been able to find it, get the votes. He thought he had the votes to pass his draconian bill. Okay. And so there's nothing going to happen in Congress until after the election. Okay. Talk, talk, talk about his bill. What, what does it do? It's, a, it's H.R. 2309. And not only would it uh, push forward the, 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 post, the post of Master General's plan, which is to close half the mail processing plants and make deep cuts in the, in the hours at post offices, but it would strip the, the unions of their collective bargaining rights and basically adjust, oh. uh, have an unelected committee appointed to adjust wages and benefits. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, so it, it's... Uh, okay, so that, that really is drastic. That, I mean, that's, that's pretty drastic, uh, yeah. what's, what, what the, what's being pushed forward in Congress. And we on the, that are impacted by, the, by these cuts and closures, uh, postal workers, but also in you know, our families and our communities, um, certainly going to have a tremendous impact on, on communities throughout the country because postal work ha is, is living wage, you know, jobs, union yeah. protected jobs. Uh -huh. And, and particularly in, in uh, um, black communities and uh, uh, among veterans, the postal service is the largest employer of African Americans in this country. It's hmm. the largest employer of veterans. It's the largest employer of immigrants. It's the second largest employer in the country. It's also the, the largest in unionized industry, 400,000 unionized people. So a lot of um, discretionary income is going to go away right. as, uh -huh. as people, as these jobs are destroyed, yeah. but also a tremendous uh, impact on um, the ability of elderly people and rural people and people in low income, particularly black and brown communities, to communicate and to get, um, you know, for the elderly, their prescription drugs, for the, for the small business, their get a, uh, the opportunity to uh, get their advertising out on time or the con community newspaper to get their newspaper delivered at the uh -huh. right, you know, on the day of the week that they expect. And um, if, when these post offices get their get cuts and these postmaster positions go away, um, people who are working in those towns aren't going to have a chance to get into the post office. They're going to have to, uh, yeah. they're going to lose their postal service. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and so if they lose their postal system, service, what are the alternatives for them? Well, it's a good question. Uh, it, it, we're, we're hoping that we won't, don't have to find out. <laughs> um, clearly, the, a, um, the agenda, um, because the Postal Service is not broke, why would, why would, why would this agenda be, pushing, be pushed forward? It's, it's a privatization agenda. It's a union-busting agenda. And um, there, this is a 67, or, a yeah, $67 billion industry, with, uh, mm -hmm. which, which in itself also impacts all these other industries like uh, mailing houses and you know, printers and uh, greeting card companies and all that. Trillion dollar industry, actually, uh, overall. The private sector wants to get a hold of the, of the profitable portions of the Postal Service, which is the, you know, the downtown business, the suburban business, uh -huh. and uh, the rural areas and the low-income communities will kind of be set adrift. Yeah. Right now, they don't bother with those communities. I mean, UPS, FedEx, DHL. UPS and FedEx bring parcels to my post office every day and drop them off for our letter carriers to deliver. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they charge more, uh -huh. hand, them all, hand off the packages to us, pay us uh -huh. for what it costs us to deliver them, and they pocket the difference. So we're subsidizing the, the private carriers. Oh, there's no question about oh, that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not the Internet. It's not uh, private sector. It's not, it's not bloated labor contracts. It's not even the recession that's killing the Postal Service. It's this pre-funding mandate that Congress has imposed, and Congress is refusing to fix it, and the Postmaster General is going forward. Well, what we have, what we are insisting is that the Postmaster General doesn't have to go forward with these cuts and closures. In fact, he can refuse to make this, these payments. Mm -hmm. And just last week, he announced that he wasn't going to make them. 
He announced that this this August first uh, deadline for the next 5.5 billion, uh -huh. he's not going to pay it. And there's another deadline on uh, that's for the 2012 payment. Uh -huh. And then there's another September 30th. 5.5 billion payment due for 2013 fiscal year 2013. He says he's not going to make that either. But he's going forward. Uh, yes, right. With, so that's what he's, strikes he's me is why are we going forward? He's delaying the mail with okay. these closures of the plants and these cuts to the post offices. And he also says he needs to eliminate Saturday delivery and door-to-door -door delivery, mm -hmm. which he's he's trying to get uh, Congress to agree to right now. Um, so door-to-door so -door delivery is the door heart door of delivery. the postal service. Right. So well, actually, only 35% of um, postal patrons get door-to-door -door delivery. Everyone else gets either um, cluster box delivery. You know what I mean? The difference between door-to-door, -door where the carrier comes up on your porch and uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I've always lived in the well, city, if you so live that's in why. The inner yeah. city, that's the kind of delivery you <laughs> oh, get. Right. That's okay. the old old time. Delivery. Old, well, in, old the, in, in the suburbs and in, in, in stretched out areas, people uh, get curbside delivery or cluster box apartments. Oh, I you know, see. That kind of stuff. Oh, okay. But so what, the, what to eliminating door to door delivery means that you would have to go walk to the end of your block and get your mail in the cluster box. Oh, I see. You know, okay. So it's going to have a huge impact on, um, you know, the elderly and the uh, free. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And of course, you're not going to get the kind of individual service. I mean, as a letter carrier, I, I looked in on the frail and elderly, you know, I, when people wanted their package delivered around the back and put on the back porch, I did that, you know, uh -huh. with cluster boxes, you know. Yeah, yeah get right, that kind right, of yeah. Uh -huh, individual right. service. Yeah, so some of those friendly eyes in the community that we're oh, yeah. kind of used to, uh, you know, saying, wow, something's wrong here, they, they, it just won't be there. No, right. no. Yeah, so, so talk about these um, mail houses uh, that do the bulk mailings. Yeah. Uh, have they been vocal in opposition to these plans or...? Well, it's interesting. The um, the private pre-sort houses will get more business as the postal plants go down. Right now, um, part of the privatization agenda is has been to lower the cost to actually subsidize uh, the private pre-sort houses, so that instead of you know, a business bringing their mail to be sorted to the postal service. Okay. Uh -huh. It goes to a, a private pre-sort house, who, which then delivers the mail pre-sorted directly to the letter carrier. Uh -huh. And uh, that's been going on for a, a number of years. The other, the so, the private pre-sort houses aren't aren't objecting, but the but the mailing, like the big big magazine distribution, uh, those folks are are quite upset uh -huh. and they're actually starting some of them like Time Warner and Bloomberg News are starting to use or experiment with private um, delivery and it's, uh, they tried for a while with in Portland and gave it up uh, the Bloomberg News with uh, throwing the magazine up on people's porch oh yeah uh -huh. you know, it's like a newspaper <laughs> and uh, so those are those are going to be really low wage jobs. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The other the other aspects of the privatization agenda, which are actually quite clear, um, the retail portion, the postmaster general wants to turn post turn, you know, small post offices and and in in every neighborhood into um, what he calls village post offices, which means that it goes into the Walmart or the you know oh, oh, the oh, office uh -huh. depot or you know, whatever it is, the gas station, the general, which means that the, you know, the, lo the low-wage non-union employee, the non-postal employee is uh -huh. both trying to help the customers with this aspect of the business and sell stamps. Uh -huh. And, but of course, the, the, the village post offices won't include a lot of other, a lot of the services that now mm -hmm. the postal service provides. And the other aspect is, is, is letter carrying. The postal service has already tried to contract out letter carrying routes to private contractors. Um, we raised a big fuss. We actually started the fight back here in Beaverton. Oh uh, yes, I recall that. Uh -huh. uh, with a big picket of uh, a private, they, with new housing developments, they were starting to, you know, contract out these out, these letter carrier new routes. And uh, we got that after, off the table, but in this, in the union uh, negotiation, contract negotiations this year, they broke down over that very issue. The postmaster general was insisting that he be able to contract out letter carrying routes. Uh -huh. no. okay. Privatization is clearly on the agenda. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so if all of these employees, postal employees with good union wages are uh, dismissed, they go on to unemployment. My understanding is that there is uh, that the, uh, the the ranks of the postal carriers and postal employees in general is is aging. Oh yeah. Uh, and they haven't hired new people. Right. So um, so automatically they've got some high uh, higher than probably average uh, healthcare costs and so forth. But anyway, but those people who have have been making good wages are not going to be there anymore. Uh, and all of that, all of that income that they now are able to spend in the economy is subtracted uh, while the while we start paying them uh, unemployment benefits. Yes. So the economic uh, ramifications of this is really pretty severe. Yeah, no, no question that it, it's it's going to hurt the taxpayer and the the postal fix, the financial fix, uh, does involves no tax dollars at all. This, 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 this money that's in the surplus in the pension funds and this pre-funding mandate for health benefits, it all comes out of postage. Tax mm -hmm. dollars are not involved at all. And, and uh, the Postal Service needs access to its own money. That's postage money. Yeah. But what's going to happen, as you said, is people are excessed, as they say. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be tax dollars that are going to support them uh -huh. with the okay. unemployment. Okay. All right. And um, how do our viewers get involved with the struggle to keep the post office as we've known it? Well, we're trying to we're trying to build a network um, nationwide called Communities and Postal Workers United, mm -hmm. and it's uh, local coalitions. What we're finding is that uh, when postal workers and veterans and seniors and uh, low income advocates, those folks that are most impacted by what's happening with the postal service get together and resist on a local level these closures and cuts that the Postal Service backs off. In fact, in um, uh, Summer Lake, is, uh, post office is, is the most, uh, uh, the example we like to tell, the story we like to tell, where the Postal Service is required before it closes the post office to call for a hearing. And usually they put a little, a little, little small notice on a, on a bulletin board in the post office that nobody sees. And oh, right. hold uh -huh. it during the middle of the day when working people don't get there. Um, well, at Summer Lake, um, appealed and got an evening meeting and 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 uh, advertised it and got the whole community to show up and and badgered, badgered the postal representatives for four for four hours and not only did they keep their post office open but they expanded the number of hours that it was open oh, uh -huh. and uh, in Vermont um, there was a there was a mail processing plant that was scheduled for closure 500 people showed up at the hearing this is in Vermont uh -huh. and uh, including the, uh, the state uh, senators and state representatives and governor, and uh, they backed off there. That 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 plant is still open. Uh -huh. And in Oregon, um, they, these four processing plants that are scheduled to close, they were scheduled to close in January of this year. But because of the organizing that we've been doing in Oregon, including a huge hearing in uh, in Eugene to prevent to uh, to call out the postal service on on the closure of the plant in the Eugene Springfield area. They backed off, you uh -huh. know, a year and a half on these closures. So okay. when we do the local organizing, um, we can make a difference, and and um, that's what we're we're encouraging people to get in touch with us. communities and postal workers united. Is this where I tell where the website? Okay, about the yes. website. Yes, please do. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. it's cpwunited.com. Okay, and uh, you can you can uh, find our the Portland uh, connection. There on that web on the website on uh -huh. a local um, local connection, and uh, if people are in, want to want to directly connect with uh, with us in Portland, uh, they can call me. Okay. My phone number. Yeah, actually, we've had it on the screen. Oh, you so had it on right the screen. Now, okay, right, fine. Yes. All right, right, great. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Um, how how are we doing for time? Well, we're we're just about we're just we, we we've got uh, about a minute for oh, you to okay. do a little wrap up. Oh, okay. So uh, whatever sure. you want to say. Well. Um, what I want to say is that uh, the Postal Service is not broke. It does need to adapt in the age of the, uh, the digital age. Um, and we're recommending, and there's some bills that have been introduced by uh, Peter DeFazio and Bernie Sanders in the Senate that um, allow the Postal Service to be involved in more kinds of products and services, include, including postal banking, including one-stop government, uh, you know, buy your, uh, your, get your hunting license and, uh -huh. and get uh, 
notary, your notary services or access to the internet or copy center or all those, all kinds of things that in other parts of the world postal, serv postal offices do these things uh -huh. for the public. We should be able to do that here um, as well as do things like what I was talking about, looking on, looking on the frail and elderly and, yeah. and uh, you know, pick up and drop off from local businesses, those kinds of things. Um, but it's not, postal service is not broke and Congress is stuck and the Postmaster General is driving the postal service into a death spiral. We have to raise the, the pressure and uh, catch the spirit of the Occupy movement, right. uh, okay. so to speak. To, uh, right. to really push back. Okay. And this seems like it's really something where activism, people in the street, people in the post office going there and making voices here makes a difference. So yeah. uh, that's the clear message that I've gotten from this. So thank you very much thank for being much, our guest David. today. Thanks All right. for having me on. Right. Bye. So we've been talking with Jamie Partridge, uh, who is a retired uh, postal carrier and is with the organization, um, what's the organization? Communities and Postal Workers United. Great, good, thank you. So. Uh, never miss an episode of Populist Dialogues again. Or want to watch an episode again? Populist Dialogues is now on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and search for Populist Dialogues. Click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows this year and to subscribe. We are also available on Blip TV. Search for Populist Dialogues. Subscription is available there also. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on a sustainable, actable economy. Learn more about uh, our Learn more about us at our national website, thealliancefordemocracy.org, or our Portland website, www afd-pdx.org. I want to thank our crew today, Roger Bates, Don Baham, and Richard Hatch. And thank you to the audience for watching. Uh, and I hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.